It's a good seal off block. Tilski pins everybody back to the inside. And it's a mission tonight, as you can tell, and that is to protect their quarterback, Mark Brunel. Here's Keenan McCardell getting a lot of respect from Randy Fuller and getting a lot of area in which to turn up and take that football. Take it from me as an old offensive lineman. When you know your quarterback is a little bit nicked, when you know he's playing hurt, you do anything to keep your guy from laying a hand on him. From the 26, look at that protection. And look at that pass, and it's caught by Jimmy Smith. It'll be first and goal. From now looks like he hasn't missed 44 minutes, much less 44 days. Taylor is again. They dropped the blitz this time. It was picked up beautifully. And again, Brunel had all the time in the world. But they picked up the blitz, gave Brunel the time, and he fired a right to Jimmy Smith. Well, one of the things we're seeing here early is not just the performance of the Jaguars, but it has been the inability of the Steelers' secondary to really play sound coverages. They've been having this problem since the very beginning. The Jaguars are just exploiting an ongoing problem for Pittsburgh. Three tight end set. That means it's Means, and Means takes it to the one-yard line. Second down and goal. Tom Coughlin hired by the Jaguars the year before they started to play out of Boston College. He was the coach there, and Bill Cowher has been around now six seasons since 1992 and has taken his team to the playoffs every year. There's Jim Hazlitt, their defensive coordinator. He's working down on the sideline, and it has been somewhat of a rocky go here for the Steelers very early here in this 97 season, but their secondary has not been cohesive. Second and goal, 10th play of the drive. Again, the three tight end set. Natron Means looking for the end zone, and he's in there. Touchdown, Jacksonville. And it's almost just tough to deny this offensive line. This surge off the line of scrimmage was terrific with Means right behind it. Very effective drive. Baselli pins his guy to the inside. Greg Lloyd really untouched, unable to make the tackle. Greg Lloyd flies up through the hole, but Natron goes to the inside of him. And once he's got that body lane, once all you get are the shoulder pads of Natron Means, it's virtually impossible to keep him from picking up at least two or three yards. You have got to somehow get under those pads. When he's got the body lean, he's unstoppable. Mike Hollis for the extra point. Jags go 68 yards in 10 plays. First time ever, Monday Night Football in Jacksonville. A dream beginning for the Jaguars. 7-0. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to pay last respects to the Internet as we know it. Lucent brings new life to net. Less congestion, phone calls, and faxes over net. And CD quality sound. Lucent Technologies. We make the things that make communications work. Honey, I'm going to run out and pick up some shoelaces. Honey, I'm going to run out and pick up a lint roller. Hey, hon, what was I going to get? Lint roller. Oh, yeah. Honey, I'm just going to run out and pick up our trophy. This tight-handling, 132-horsepower Dodge Neon you run errands in is the very same one the Sports Car Club of America runs races in. Dodge Neon, under 10.7 for starters, around 13.3, nicely equipped. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. Coors Light, proud partner of the John Wayne Cancer Institute and their search for a cure. Dollar Rent-A-Car with low rates right at the airport. Dollar makes sense. And Circuit City answers in every department. Low prices all over the store. I'm sure that Tom Coughlin in his waking moments, we look at Greg Lloyd who had a shot at had a shot at Natron Means and couldn't get it done, but I'm sure that Coughlin has gone through a lot of different scenarios in trying to envision how this game would get started. I'm not sure he dared dream one as perfect as this, where they get the ball first offensively. Mark Brunel is throwing pinpoint passes with excellent pass protection, and they drive the length into the field for a touchdown. And only looked at a couple of blitzes. Yeah. I'm sure he expected much more with a gimpy quarterback. The Steelers loved the blitz. They only gave him a couple. An absolutely perfect beginning for Jacksonville. Two rookies are back there. Will Blackwell from San Diego State, flanked by Mike Adams from Texas. Mike Hollis to kick off. 
He had three touchbacks in the Giant game two weeks ago. Taking it to one, Will Blackwell, the San Diego State rookie, out past the 30. A flag is thrown. You saw that come into your shot. And he's inside the 20, and they can't tackle him at the 10. And for the moment, it's a touchdown pending the call. Ron Zook, the special teams coach, Coughlin is upset. But Zook is going to be a lot more upset than Coughlin, apparently, in a second. He will be. It's against Pittsburgh, so back it comes. Holding number 54 of the return team during the run back. 10 yards will be first down. Dante Jones with the hold. So Jerry Austin makes the call. Zook for the moment elated. But back it comes with 9.30 left in the first. 7 nothing. An extra point with Cordell Stewart, the quarterback. Bill Cowher naming him before the start of training camp. There was no quarterback controversy in Pittsburgh. And Stewart to throw on first down and guns it complete for a gain of 12 to Yancey Thigpen. First down, Pittsburgh. The rest of the offense, Jerome Bettis, the bus out of the backfield. Tim Lester, the blocking back. Big Penn who made that last catch and Charles Johnson an excellent wide out Mark Bruner despite a broken toe the tight end tonight and up front John Jackson a good one Will Wolford the veteran Damani Dawson as good as they come in the middle Tom Islinski for the injured Brendan Stye and the veteran Justin Strelzik first down at the 33 out of a double tight end set and it's Jerome Bettis bunched up in the middle picking up two up to the 35-yard line, second down and eight. Now the Jaguars with Lagerman, the ex-Jet, Yurkovic, the ex-Packer, Davey, and Clyde Simmons, longtime veteran. Kevin Hardy, Brian Schwartz in the middle, and Eddie Robinson, the one-time order, doing a nice job. Beasley and the hard-hitting Thomas at the corners. Davis and Hudson are the safeties. Second down and eight, Pittsburgh from the 35. Tim Lester and John Whitman. In the backfield along with Bettis, who gets the ball, and Bettis picks up three. Jerome coming off a game in which he gained 134 yards to spark the win against Washington. The third down and five. Dick Jerome, the defensive coordinator. Dick LeBeau had been the defensive coordinator and moved on to the Cincinnati Bengals. But Bill Cower puts his imprint on the defense. Bill Cower and all his defensive specialist himself. You're right about that, Al. That's his expertise. Third down and four from the 39-yard line as Stewart Pompey guns it deep. Johnson is open. He's inside the 20 and takes it to the 11-yard line. And we talked about the fact the Steelers did not have a single play over 21 yards in two games. And here they connect for 49. Well, Stewart had all the time in the world to throw that football in there. Was inside-outside coverage, and Johnson was right between the top of your screen. Now, you'll see the cornerback playing underneath, playing soft. He's going to get help coming over from the middle. That's Dave Thomas, the cornerback. Here comes the help in Hudson, but he didn't get there in time. Yeah, somehow, Thomas thinks Hudson has that deep outside, and Hudson doesn't do it. He doesn't get there. First down from the 12, Jerome Bettis. Takes it about halfway to the goal line, gets to the six, it'll be second and four. The safety, Hudson, comes up to make the tackle. Well, part of that pass was made possible by the other really good offensive line in this football game, and that's the one that plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We've documented them for years, one of the best run-blocking units in the National Football League, if not the best. Here they are right here. Trying to give Jerome Bettis a little something to the right side. Between Bettis and Means, we've got two real big men running the football tonight. Second down and four. Blitz. Stewart doing what he does so craftily for the touchdown. We mentioned electrifying at the beginning of the game, and he shows you there what he can do. You know about Stewart. He was called slash because he can run. He can catch. He can throw. He can do a lot of things, and he put it all together on that series. Well, he was about 90% a couple of weeks ago, and you could see it when he was running and scrambling against Washington. Not anymore. 
He makes a couple of good cuts here. He's wearing a knee brace on the left knee. Watching Plant here. Put that head down, sees the end zone, and gets it. I, he's above 90%. He is 100%, and he is some athlete. Norm Johnson for the point after. He signed Chris Jackie from Green Bay, but he has a hip flexor, so they brought Johnson back, and he ties the game. Talk about impressive. You get a touchdown called back, a kickoff return for a touchdown brought back. Rather than getting into the dumper, what do you do? You drive it down the field for the tying touchdown. Excellent work by Pittsburgh. It's the sixth drive line by Willie Jackson. And he brings it back to the 26-yard line. The Jags will take over at that spot. Fred McAfee makes the tackle. And Cordell Stewart answered with an 80-yard quick drive of his own. We're tied 7-7. Jaguars have the ball for the second time at their own 26-yard line. Stewart and Bettis resting up as Natron Means takes it up to the 30-yard line. And you're right, Dan, it's like mirror images here with Means and Bettis. But on the first drive with Brunel, Mark was sharp after his first pass was incomplete. He hit Keenan McCardell a couple of times and then linked with Jimmy Smith, and that set up the Jacksonville touchdown. Now, the one thing that hasn't happened yet is Brunel being pressured. He hasn't had to move under pressure. He hasn't had to run with the football. He hasn't been hit yet. Second and six. Protection is great again, and he throws it away, and there's a flag down at the 28-yard line. Jerry Austin is the official. Greg Lloyd, bottom of your screen, just coming across the line of scrimmage, trying All to get with it. Number 95 to the defense. Five yards. Repeats it there. Greg Lloyd, who... Last September 1st in the opening game of the season, 1996. Right here. Right here in Jacksonville. Tore his knee up, had reconstruction surgery, and has come back, they say, 100%. Second and left at the Well, this is one of the reasons that Mark Brunel to date has not been pressured. The biggest offensive line in the history of the National Football League, averaging almost 321 pounds per guy. They are good and they are whoppers. Second and one. Brunel pump fake goes deep and throws that out of bounds intended for McCardell who'd gotten behind the defender on the play, Donnell Wolford. Ooh, and that was Brunel would like to have that back again. He was wide open. He ran right by Wolford. Wolford has had a lot of trouble thus far this season. The first two games a little hesitation and it caught Wolford he flat-footed, and had that been led to the inside, that's a quick six. Well, Donnell was turned. Did you see he was turned and running, and when he has to make a stop, he's got to pivot 180 degrees. Not the best of technique. Third and one, and they give it to Means, and the Pittsburgh defense stiffens as Nolan Harrison broke through to make the tackle. So big Natron Means can't find any room at all on a third and one, and the Jaguars to punt. Harrison, the X-Raider. Bill Cower has watched his defensive unit have to insert five new starters, including Harrison. Trying to ride, run over to the right side, right over Searcy, the right tackle, a former Steeler, and it was stuffed by Harrison. An outstanding piece of work by Nolan Harrison. Now Brian Barker, who's done a nice job this year to punt. Will Blackwell is going to let it bounce. It bounces at the 29-yard line. And he's covered up at the 27, and a flag comes in at the end of the play. Special teams coach Ron Zook. Well, Jacksonville certainly, Bucky Brooks acting like it hit one of the Steelers. That's what Jacksonville is maintaining, that when that ball hit the ground, it touched one of the Pittsburgh players. If you didn't get a signal, ineligible man downfield. Larry Pasquale, who's been a, a coach for 19 years, the Jaguars special teams coach. We have illegal touching on the kicking team. Number 22 went out of bounds. And came back in and was the first to touch the ball. That is a foul. That penalty is declined. First down, Pittsburgh. So they take the play. They'll get the ball at their own 28. 433 left in the period. Tied 17. The Jaguars to their win against the Giants. And Mark Brunel 
the starter who's back tonight looking on as the Pittsburgh Steelers take over at their own 28 yard line. Four thirty three left in the quarter. And it's Jerome Bettis over the right side up to the 30 yard line for a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. Here is tonight's the Home Depot coaches back Bill Cower a 10 and 1 career record on Monday night football and that's the best by any coach who has coached a minimum of 10 Monday night games his only loss two years ago in Miami 23 to 10 he loves to see us coming second down and eight from the 30 yard line and that is caught by Charles Johnson for a first down up at the 40 yard line there's Cower. meanwhile if you look at the bottom of that very same list the guys who've not had good records on Monday night it's pretty amazing when you think about it that the guys who've coached at least 10 games on a Monday night the three worst records are owned by Joe Gibbs Sam Weich and Mike Ditka looks like NBC's pregame show <laughs> Two out of the three in the Hall of Fame as coaches as well. First down from the 40-yard line. And Stewart loses the ball. It's a loose football. At the 38-yard line, Tony Brackens created the fumble. He knocked it loose, and Jerry Austin says Jacksonville football. Eddie Robinson recovered, but there's the man who created it, Brackens. There is a limit to how long you can stand in the pocket and not expect to get hit, especially from behind. You know the pass rushers have gone past you, which is the case here. There comes Brackens from behind. He gets hit in the front by Yurkovich, and his arm was not moving forward. That is a fumble. Good work by the officials. And only a three-step drop, too, Dan. That was supposed to be released quickly. It wasn't, and the Steelers paid the price. You wonder if Cordell's knee or or something kept him from leaving. He should have left the pocket and tried to create something. And this is Means taking it to the 29-yard line behind a Derek Brown block. Natron came late to the Jaguars a year ago, and he was late taking over as a starter, but he had just erupted in the playoffs. Had a great game against Buffalo. Had a great game, 175 yards there, 140 yards against Denver. Just had a terrific playoff. He's been rejuvenated after three years in San Diego. There he is again. Remember, he helped, as he picks up the first down, lead the Chargers to the Super Bowl following the 94 season. But his conditioning was a problem. He'd been holding out in San Diego, and then Bobby Beathard finally said, you're released. Jacksonville picked him up. He bided his time on the bench here, took over last December. And has been terrific ever since. In 94 season, he had over 1,300 yards rushing. He can explode. And particularly, what a pleasure for a running back to operate behind this offensive line. They are huge. He certainly likes the beaches, though, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. he goes from the beaches of the Pacific to the beaches of the Atlantic. From the 26-yard line, Brunel throws, and it is caught by Jimmy Smith at the 16 yard line that's close to a first down with forward progress Jason Gilden came in that time and put a lick on Brunel yeah he actually got touched this is big news so far in this game Mark Brunel actually got hit on that play for these two outside receivers Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardell they are extraordinary they are great targets and they have tremendous speed and really fine hands Smith with 83 last year. McCardo with 85. A lot it's of production. A, it's a first down, and Natron Means over the left side, working to the outside, takes it to the 14. Tripped up by LeVon Kirkland. The ball is loose. Steelers think they have it, but it was whistled dead. LeVon Kirkland, he brings about as much to the table as any linebacker in this game does when he makes a hit. Natron a little slow getting up. He's going to go to the sideline as Stewart comes in, but when you get a 274 pound middle linebacker when he hits a guy he's been hit he brings a little snap and a little pop 
when he delivers a lick on somebody. Stewart, you don't, with Stewart in there, you don't lose a lot with Means coming out. He was a starter before Means got here. Second down and eight in the waning seconds of the first quarter, and Brunel has to take a timeout. So with Means out and Stewart in on second down, and we'll look at the Pittsburgh defensive alignment. Mark takes Jacksonville's first timeout. College football coming your way on Saturday on ABC. Doubleheader. Except on the West Coast, the regional early action, Ohio State, Missouri, Virginia, North Carolina, Texas, Rice. And then the featured attraction, 3.30 Eastern time, Notre Dame goes into Ann Arbor, and Dan will be there. Notre Dame against Michigan. And Notre on Dame the West Coast at 4 o'clock only, Frank's Trojans against the University of California. And, guys, we go to Charlotte next week. Jacksonville for the first time on Monday night tonight. Next week, the Panthers host the 49ers at Erickson Stadium in Charlotte. Little NFC West action there, and uh, 49ers coming off a big win yeah. over Atlanta, undefeated thus far. And the Panthers, I think it's been well documented how they have played these last couple of years against the 49ers. Second down and eight, Stewart in the game, number 33, back of Brunel. With a half a minute to go in the quarter. Brunel throws off his back foot and it's caught by Derek Brown, a former number one draft choice of the Giants who came down here a couple of years ago. He's tackled by Kirkland, a little short of the first down at the seven. It'll be third and a short one. Brown, a big target. And when you got those two outside receivers, Keenan Marcardell and Jimmy Smith, they're going to down here draw off and draw the double coverage, and you're going to get that kind of coverage, linebacker coverage on Derek Brown. Big target. That's the end of the first quarter. Pittsburgh 7, Jacksonville 7. And Monday Night Football returns after this message. And a word for ABC stations. AT&T, it's all within your reach, presents going the extra yard. You know, preseason's no different for us. We have a rigorous, demanding schedule. Refresh your courses, game day skills, you know, that sort of thing. Three, four, Take a lot of abuse out there. Pass interference on number 28 of the defense. Next, you know, most fans, they don't pay us much attention. The ones that do, this is good stuff. Well, they know just how beautiful a good call can be. So? Yeah. You have to let more folks know about us. Dad, we need a new location. Check this out. See? This is our new location. This is the internet. Whoa. 475 people visited our gallery on our website last night. I told you, location is everything. Experience the art of doing business on the internet with the most powerful network in the world. Every man has got his fantasy. ABC's got Jenna Elfman. Kiss me on the double. Where exactly would that be? She's this season's designated babe. You're gonna fall for Dharma and Greg. Right after Spin City, ABC premiere went. For your Lincoln Mercury dealers, model your clothes out. It's lights out on the 97 Lincolns with up to $5,000 cash back. So even though it's not the end of the year for a stylish, technologically advanced 1997 Lincoln Continental, it's lights out. Ditto for the jet-setting 1997 Lincoln Mark 8. And if you come in now, you can get $5,000 cash back on a roomy, luxurious 1997 Lincoln Town Car. We'll leave a light on for you, but hurry. Tony Zarella awarded the Emmy for Best Sports Anchor for the second year in a row. Our blimp tonight, the Bud One Airship hovering high above Altel Stadium in Jacksonville. Yes, this is... The stadium once known as the Gator Bowl. Third and one as we start the second quarter with Natron Means taking it to the five on a first down. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan as Monday Night Football comes to North Florida for the first time ever. And a good first quarter. And you've got a 321-pound offensive line. Natron is back in the lineup. This is when you... Uh, this is when you like to pound away. This is when you like to make the most of these guys. Tom Coughlin's team at the five-yard line with a double tight end set. First and goal. That's Rich Griffith going in motion and a whistle before the snap. Mm. Five yards. It is still first down. 
Yeah, that'll make Coughlin look like that. They had so much going in terms of the formation and man in motion, they weren't looking at the clock. Oh, that changes that changes the play calling. That changes everything around. That that's a major mistake to give away five yards when you're on the five yard line. Little too much motion involved. First and goal from the ten. That's Griffith in motion. Means with the ball to the right side and knifing through is Levon Kirkland, number 99. Well, the first thing is, if you can get Natron Means going parallel to the line of scrimmage, you are way ahead of the game defensively. That is not his strong point. It's not any running back's strong point unless you're Barry Sanders. But you turn this big body and get it going sideways, you've accomplished what you want to do defensively. He's not going to turn the corner on a good defensive football team. Second down and goal from the 12. Game time, early second quarter. Cardell comes in motion and they give it to Means and that doesn't fool the Steelers. He's limited to a gain of one. It'll be third down and goal from the 11. Lloyd and Henry converge on the tackle. It'll change up on that call. The Steelers, of course, expecting pass. They come with Means on the ground again. And now definitely puts them in the pass. Now again, we'll, we'll be curious to see what Bill Coward does. Will he come with the blitz? They've only gotten to Mark Bunnell one time, even touched him one time. And they don't look like they're showing blitz. Third and goal, Stewart offset in the backfield. Brunel, great protection, throws! It's caught by Jimmy Smith, touchdown Jaguars. Randy Fuller is playing way off Jimmy Smith. You're down inside the 15-yard line. You've got to be up there playing that receiver tight. That was just pitch and catch on the part of Brunel. Looks like the Steelers were sitting back in some type the, of a zone. Top you, of your screen. You've got, to, you've got to be up there in the coverage. Well, Fuller is playing zone. And he's not locked up one-on-one. -on -one. Now, whether that's right or not, Frank, I don't know. But he was playing a zone defense. Well, when you're down that close, your zone, if you're playing it, you've got to be up in the man's face. He was playing, playing a nice zone back in the end zone. <laughs> the next county. Hollis for the point and Andy Fuller playing almost back to the goal line. Signals the slant. How obvious can we be? And delivers it for the touchdown. The Steelers playing a very soft, unsteeler-like defense down there close to the goal line. A 90s version of drawing it in the dirt. <laughs> Isn't it? Hollis kicks off. Blackwell, who had his return for a touchdown nullified on a holding call, is off to the races partially again as he takes it to the 42-yard line. Good run back. Tackled by Ty Halleck. Another look at Mark Brunel. He realizes right away that the Steelers are sitting back seven yards off his outside receiver. Look, that's, <laughs> that's so obvious. Everybody in this... But the only guy that needed to see it was Jimmy Smith. Well, Randy Fuller might have taken his blue. Brunel, seven of nine, coming back after the knee injury. Six weeks of rehab, looking very sharp. Now Stewart with his team down by seven. On a roll after taking the give. And Cordell picks up about six before he steps out of bounds, forced by Eddie Robinson. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by the complete line of 1998 Lincoln Automobiles. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. Miller Light, now an official beer sponsor of the NFL. And residents in by Marriott, room to relax, room to work, room to breathe. Cordell gave the Steeler offense a little room to breathe right there. Uh, a successful first down play that picks up six yards. Second down and five, and it's Bettis pulling his way just across the 50 into Jacksonville territory, tackled by Davis, setting up third and short. Good work by the Steeler offensive line then as Jacksonville shows the blitz, a run blitz, and they pick it up, and they get good yardage. Well, one thing about the up-front guys for Pittsburgh, they're all veterans. These guys have been around for a while. Dawson, a 10-year guy. Jackson, a 10-year guy. Strelzik, 8. Mislinski, 5. Wolford, 13. So an extremely veteran group. 
And Pittsburgh has to take a timeout, some sort of offensive confusion. The play just coming in late, and Cordell Sewer looked at the play clock and knew he couldn't get it off. He had no choice. Timeout, Pittsburgh. Down and two as Stewart throws, and it's caught at the 42 yard line, and the Steelers convert on a first down to Yancey Thigpen. And this is, I, I think, where the Pittsburgh offense and Cordell Stewart are at their best. When he's on the move, when he breaks contain, he gets outside. He's in a position to really make something ha happen, especially in a third and short situation like that, Frank. A lot of pressure on the defense. He could have ran that himself, and he depended upon his arm. That's what they want him to do, though. They want him to throw the ball when he can. When he can't, don't be afraid to pull it down. He hesitated when he first started, but now he can, he'll take it and pull it down and run with it, whatever the defense demands. And they used the timeout and were able to convert. Stewart going deep, and it is tipped, and it's incomplete. There's a flag down. I think back Charles 48-yard line. I think Charles Johnson was moving towards the line of scrimmage before or before the snap of the football. He was. You come in motion, boy, you have to be patient. Illegal motion. Number 81 moving toward the line of the scrimmage before the ball is snapped. Five yards. Repeat first down. Well, you just got to you gotta hold it back. You're in motion. You want to make that break. You want to get downfield and make the catch. Watch, you'll come into your picture here on the bottom. Right there. He starts making a subtle move. We'll see it better from this angle. Boy, coming, no doubt. In, coming in as a receiver, though, you can yeah. look right at that football, and he should never have done that, and he knows that. You look at the ball. You don't listen to the count. Just so anxious to get downfield and make a play. First down and 15 from the 47. Stewart protected well, but it's batted in the air, and it's incomplete at the 34-yard line, batted by the defensive tackle, Don Davey. It'll be second and 15 for the Steelers. Mentioned at the top, it's an important early season game for Pittsburgh, and it really, it truly is in the sense that Jacksonville would be 3-0 and and the Steelers 1-2. and And don't forget the Ravens are 3-1 and right now in the same division. Ball hits Davey right at the hairline. Hmm. Second down and 15. That was Stewart's first incomplete pass. And he's going to take off, but not according to Tony Brackens, who trips him up. The second-year defensive end out of the University of Texas. And that's a set play. That was the a draw play, quarterback draw, and Brackens upsets it. Brackens jumps upfield and jumps around the block of John Jackson. How's this for a little athletic ability? Goes upfield around the tackle and still able to fall back inside and make the tackle. Well, and if he doesn't make that tackle, Stewart's got not only the first down, he's got big yardage. Third down and 15 out of the shotgun from the Jacksonville 47. Four-man Jaguar rush. Stewart under pressure. Now he's going to take off, but it'll be well short of the first down. He's run out of bounds by Eddie Robinson at the 39-yard line. Good coverage by the secondary of Jacksonville. They had all the receivers covered, and finally, Stewart had to pull it down, spin it to the sidelines. He knew he couldn't make it running. He kept looking for a receiver to come back, and he just couldn't uncover one. Josh Miller now. To punt it and too far. He tried to angle it yeah. and float it and did neither. Touchback to the 20. Only a 19 yard net punt, and the Jaguars get it back up by seven. And here it is, the offensive production tonight. Jacksonville, time of possession advantage. Total yardage, dead even. Brunel on first down from the 20, and Brunel gets taken down by LeVon Kirkland. And at the end of that play, the mobility of Brunel came into question for the first time tonight. 
Well, again, he is wearing that knee brace on the right knee. He tried to drive off it. He slipped. It didn't hurt himself at all. He just hasn't done that for a while. And he really had nowhere to go. Kirkland playing the classic spy role where he was floating along at the line of scrimmage, just eyeballing the quarterback, tracing his movement. The minute he broke out of the pocket, Kirkland goes upfield and makes a good play. And the Steelers' first sack of the season it took him more than nine quarters. Brunel on second and 21. Oh! the middle it's caught by Jimmy Smith and he takes it to the 39 yard line second and long and out of a big hole stopped by Carnell Lake Chris Palmer the offensive coordinator in his first year guiding this offense and again confusion in the Steelers secondary the corner to that side I think it's Fuller again he acts he releases his guy like he's expecting zone Lake heading to the outside this this just looks like a confusing piece of work by the Steelers secondary. Well, their secondary has struggled through the first two games. They were killed by Dallas. They didn't do too well against Washington, and they look confused at the moment. Darren Perry was headed for the deep outside. They fake the give. They fake the end around, then Brunel throws, and it's fumbled, but not caught. Ty Halleck had it, was popped by Perry, and fortunately for the Jaguars, ruled incomplete. Well, this... Remember a year or so ago, they changed that rule. You got to come down with both feet, demonstrate possession that you have the football. You can have it in the air all you want. You have to get both feet down and demonstrate to that nearest official that you have the football under control. He never had it. Nope. Didn't put it away. Pretty fine hit there by Perry. He and Carnell Lake would put it on you. On second and ten, Means, Natron Means flag down, gets to the 47 yard line thrown by the umpire and you know what that means 99.9 percent .9 of the time holding offense holding number 79 of the offense 10 yards repeat second down dave widell the center jacksonville back into a passing situation again the steelers lost three cornerbacks to free agency this past off season they have five defensive starters they have a very complex defensive scheme and they're notoriously slow start as they have been all the time that Bill Cower has been there. And uh, they are really getting off defensively to a slow start this year. They have really struggled. He losses Rod Woodson to San Francisco. The other corner, Willie Williams to Seattle. Second and 20. Brunel throws, and that's tipped incomplete. They lost both defensive ends. And the other guy there missing, of course, is Chad Brown, who led the team in sacks last year and opted to sign with Seattle. And the other cornerback, Deion Figures. He also left, so it's kind of hard to weave in five new defensive uh, starters. There are the five that have departed and where they went, and I don't care how good your system, I don't care how good your coaches, uh, it, it is difficult to incorporate that many new people and not have some misfires. And certainly, and there's their number one draft choice who's, who's injured and out. So the Steelers, it's not totally unexpected that they're struggling defensively. Third and 20, they set up the screen. James Stewart slips the tackle. Out past the 40, and James Stewart picks up the first down with terrible tackling by the Steelers to the 43-yard line. Well, once again, right before the snap, the Steeler defense was in total confusion. They had a man up at the line of scrimmage, a cornerback. He went racing back to get into whatever coverage he thought he was supposed to be in. But uh, this is a very... Uh, it's surprising to see the confusion we see in the part of the defensive unit of the Steelers. But you can overcome confusion if somebody will just make a tackle. And there are going to be a whole string of missed ones starting right here. There's number one by Carnell Lake. Went there was a good second one there by Gilden from the 43. And the Steelers rising to the occasion now as Oliver Gibson, one of the backup linebackers, comes in and there's a flag down at the 47-yard line. And this may be nullified by a face mask call. Jerry Austin, who refereed the Super Bowl last year, going over things with Striking the line judge. Thoughtful pose. Yes. Mulling it. Have a face mask. Five yards. That's Gibson. Yeah. Got his hand away from it, but it bobbed that head, and they're going to call it every time. Natron had his hands on the face mask of Gibson as well. He did. Natron was the first one to put his uh, put his hand on the face mask. 
Line judge Ron Baines made the call. I, the way Natron was sitting on the ground, it almost looked like he thought it was going to be called on yeah. him. Look at this. Well, this is a, <laughs> this is another yeah. one going on over on the other side of the field. That's Coleman and Earl Holmes going at it. Makes it first and eight. And Brunel going deep, going for six. There is contact, but no flag. Jimmy Smith and Randy Fuller, step for step. Well, at least there was no confusion on that coverage, Frank. Fuller knows it's man to man, and he's going to stay with Smith. And he did a great job, and basically Brunel just threw that as far as he could out of the end zone. No one was going to get that ball. Good coverage. Now watch number 29. Stride for stride with Jimmy Smith. In good position, Brunel saw that all the way, just overthrew it, and did it deliberately. Fuller can play man-to-man, -man. so can Donnell Wolford on the other side. I think it's just a hesitancy of uh, what is going on defensively for them at the moment. They just look like some of them at times have thought they were playing zone, some man-to-man. -man. On second down and eight to the near side, and that's caught by Reggie Barlow. Back up wide out. Donnell Wolford, the ex-bear. They got him when they lost Woodson, makes the tackle at the 35-yard line. Barlow in there because Jimmy Smith had that... 60 or 70 yard wind sprint down the sidelines and Smith will be back into the lineup. And so far on this drive, the Jaguars are overcoming lots of obstacles. Remember, it started with a big sack against Brunel by Kirkland. Then they had a holding penalty on Wydell. They continue to overcome their problems and move the football. Third and a deuce out of the shotgun. Inside handoff to Stewart. And Stewart fights his way to the 33 and may have the first down tackled by Kirkland. Very close. Jerry Austin says move the chain. First down. Stewart again was a starter before Natron Means. Stewart got shaken up and hurt in December a year ago. Means got in there, was spectacular in the playoffs, and he is now the starter. But they're not hurt when James Stewart, the number one draft pick in 95, comes into this football game. That was not very good blocking at the point of attack. That was excellent work by James Stewart. He did most of that alone. Bill Cowher said last night what's killing us is third down conversions by the opponents, and it's killed them again tonight to this point as Means takes it to the 30. The Steelers have given up a first down coming into tonight's game 60% of the time to the opponents, and Jacksonville tonight six for seven on third down. So the problems continue for Bill. You can't win allowing the other team to move the chains at that clip. 60% is an extraordinary figure in and of itself. Six out of seven to this point in time. The Pittsburgh Steelers are on the verge of getting themselves in quite a hole. Second and eight from the 30-yard line. Brunel protected well. Flag comes in, and then finally with the coverage so good, Oliver Gibson gets the sack pending the penalty call. And this is something against Jacksonville. Holding against Jacksonville. Yeah, that's, there's yep. no way they're going to take no the way. penalty and give another down. Holding number 62 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. Ben Coleman. So they will have the Jaguars use up a down, lose a little yardage, but unfortunately for Pittsburgh, puts Jacksonville in a third down situation. And in effect, moved them out of field goal range. Coleman, number the 62. But when you have a gimpy quarterback, you're an offensive lineman, Dan. You're going to do anything to keep that man off him. Yeah, well, unfortunately, though, as I said for Pittsburgh, it's another third down opportunity where Jacksonville's converting at an astounding rate. Third and 15. They have to get to the 23 to convert, and the pass is thrown away. That time it was Jimmy Smith with good coverage by Randy Fuller. Fourth down, and they bring in the punting group. Yeah, Fuller was all over Smith at that point. Good time for Pittsburgh to stiffen. Jaguars on top, 14 to seven. Monday Night Football for the first time ever in Jacksonville. Jaguars, one of their goals, uh, at least according to the front office, to make it to Monday Night in year four. Well, they beat the timetable. Courtney Hawkins, the ex-Tampa Bay Buck, back to receive the kick. Ryan Bar. To the 18 goes Dana Hall, the safety, the X 49er, and a first down. Oh, and we talked about all the troubles with the special teams on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Surprise play, but these are, are plays that you work against, you talk about, you think about, you seldom see them, but they have got to be 
on the back of your mind if you're on that public turn team that this could happen. Brian Barker, among other things, used to be listed as a an emergency quarterback. Well, they sent out a 9-1-1 call on fourth and 15, and he converted. So hard to keep track of everybody who's an eligible receiver in a punting formation. Dana Hall floats out and listen to the crowd <laughs> roar their appreciation to Tom Coughlin for showing some imagination. Who's cast? It's the front page of the paper today. Great night so far. And, and then they, they really compounded the excitement here by introducing their offensive team and they introduced Mark Brunel last and this stadium was absolutely vibrating down to the foundation. And after the fake punt first half in the 16, and that is tipped. It was tipped by Carnell Lake, intended for Jimmy Smith. It'll be second down. Mark Randy, having trouble hearing the call. And Randy Fuller seems to be the target tonight as far as Jacksonville is concerned. The right cornerback. And you look over there. He's got inside help, and that ball was ticked, knocked away by Carnell Lake. So we might have been looking at another six. Might have been. Smith has already scored once tonight. Jacksonville up 14 to 7. Means the man who scored the other touchdown takes it to the nine yard line and that'll set up a third and about three tripped up by Darren Perry. Well, Natron has a has a great move to the outside then that quick cut back to the middle. He knows where he can do the most damage and that's going north and south but he slides out there so quickly and then plants that outside foot turns it up and gets good yardage. Just zone blocking by that Jaguar offensive line. Everybody just moves to the left. Allows Natron to pick his own spot. What a huge collection of human beings on that front wall for Jacksonville. Well, I'm glad I'm not Randy Fuller right now. Third and a short three. Inside give to Stewart, and the Steelers read it perfectly, and that's LeVon Kirkland who busts the play up. Yeah, give Jim Hazlitt, their defensive coordinator, the credit there. He came with the blitz, and it worked. He gambled that they were going to run the ball and run. Return. Good news show, Dharma and Greg. The old favorite, the Drew Carey Show is back. So is Ellen and Primetime Live on Wednesday. And next Monday night, we go to Charlotte, where the Carolina Panthers make their Monday night debut, speaking of cats, against the San Francisco 49ers. This is a 29-yard field goal attempt for Mike Hollis with Brian Barker to hold. And the kick is no good on the 16th play of the drive. So the, a drive kept alive by Barker's pass. And Larry Pasquale, the special teams coach, watching Hollis, who's been great so far this season, blow an easy one. 29 yards, he's been four or five. He's a good short kicker and a, a good deep kicker and just shaking his head. The ball was placed down. It looked right on rhythm. The grass is just a little tall. We did talk to some of the players and coaches tonight. They thought it was a little high, but this was just a miss by Hollis. That drive for Jacksonville had a little of everything, didn't it? Sacks, penalties, fake field, a lot of work being done and, and no points. Jacks leading by seven. A little screen pass. This is Courtney Hawkins. And the first-year Steeler, after five years at Tampa Bay, picks up 13. First down, tackled by Aaron Beasley. Playing in his sixth year, and this is his first Monday night game for Courtney Hawkins. And we've got a hurry-up offense here being run by Pittsburgh. They have two yep. timeouts left. Out of the gun. Four-man rush. Stewart over the middle. It's picked off at the 41 by Aaron Beasley. And Beasley takes it to the 32-yard line. Ooh, what a great interception by Beasley. He was really turning into a great cornerback. That ball had a lot on it. It would have been difficult even to handle by the receiver and Beasley with a diving effort came up with the interception. He's second year man out of West Virginia. Look at this steps in front. That ball was even deflected as he dove for it. Cordell Stewart trying to throw it in between two defenders and throw it a little behind Charles Johnson picked off. Well, it was thrown well behind Charles Johnson. He really didn't have any opportunity to catch that ball at all. Now the Jaguars back in business. They have one timeout remaining. 121 left. 
Play clock is down to four as Brunel throws an out that's caught by Smith, who's tackled immediately by Fuller. And they're going to say that even though Jimmy Smith didn't come down with his feet in bounds, that Fuller drove him out. That's a judgment call by the sideline official, and, and he gives it to the Jaguars. Pretty good call, too. He would have come down, I think, inside. But again, they continue to work on number 29, Randy Fuller. This time he had pretty good positioning, but those, he would have come down with the, both feet in bounds had he not been hit, and that's the ruling. And that is, uh, you can't look how perfect the positioning is there by the official. Right there. Ball is at the 25. They were just checking the the chains here. Jerry Austin saying reset the play clock to 25. It was not a first down, so it's second down and inches. Three wides now for Jacksonville. And Brunel throws, and it's Smith again on and out. Jimmy Smith really developing, but he's no sudden star. This is a kid who was drafted by the Cowboys. They thought he'd be a star, but he broke his leg one year, had an appendectomy the next, had a very acrimonious parting with Dallas, was signed by the Eagles, released by them, and now he's really come into full flower here. And again, Fuller playing very soft, playing off about 10 yards, even down deep in his own territory. Keep in mind his 1,244 yards last year was number one in the AFC. And this, <laughs> he has arrived. Along with uh, his teammate on the other side, Keenan McCardell gives uh, Mark Brunel as talented a pair of receivers as there is in this game. And McCardell, like Smith, no sudden star either. He's been oh. around, drafted by Washington, then he played with the Cleveland Browns, then he came here. And we go to Charlotte next Monday night. And there's Steve Young, left of your screen. Big day yesterday, the 49ers, despite the loss of Jerry Rice on opening day, Riding to a three and one start under new head coach Steve Mariucci against the Carolina Panthers knocked off by Kansas City yesterday and all of a sudden vulnerable in their home stadium where they didn't lose a game last season. First time in Charlotte from Monday night next week. Second week in a row with the left handed number eight. Yeah. First and ten from the 18. Here come the Steelers and Brunel throws and out of the end zone intended for McCardle but really intended just to avoid a sack by Carnell Lake. That was a strong arm in that ball out of the end zone. A late blitz coming by the Steelers. They missed the snap count by a large margin and yet they were able to get into Brunel's face and force him to throw it away. Pretty good. Watch Brunel. He's going to be falling backwards here. Falling completely away and arcs this ball all the way out the back of the end zone. Darren Perry on the blitz and they left Lake back in coverage. It's second down and 10 at the 18 yard line. Now out of a split back set with 105 to play in the half. Blitz again. Brunel throws. Caught at the 10 yard line by McCardell. A little short of the first down. It will be third and two. Tackled by Wolford. Under a minute left in the half. Good read by McCardell and Brunel. Both of them reading the blitz. And McCardell becomes the hot receiver. Saw so Mark again tapping his helmet. He's having trouble getting the play electronically called in from the sidelines. A couple of times he's run over to the bench to pick it up. So they are having problems. Third and three. Brunel, good protection. Fires into traffic. Threads the needle to McCardell. First and goal. And Jacksonville takes a timeout. What? A rifle shot by Mark Brunel. That was a John Elway, an Elway type pass. In fact, it was just a, a blue streak bullet. Frank, that 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 ball was not easily handled. I talked about it earlier. Both these outside receivers, McCardell, Jimmy Smith, great hands. Donnell Wolf Wolford, not bad positioning, but that ball had so much on it he couldn't make a play on the ball. Boy, that's just beautiful work by McCardell. Brunel winds up, and boy, is that a smoker. Well, I tell you, they're asking an awful lot of these two cornerbacks for the Steelers. Wolford, in this case, against McCardell. On the other side, we've seen it already this entire first half. Randy Fuller trying to stay with Jimmy Smith man for man and not getting any help. They don't have the 
tight end threat. The Jaguars don't, and you would think that the Steelers could get a little more help to their cornerbacks because of that. Jaguars seven touchdowns on ten drives in the red zone. Excellent. First and goal from inside the two. Means is the eye back. They fake it to him, and Brunel under pressure wants it incomplete. Intended for Rich Griffith, but the pressure was put on by Greg Lloyd. Boy, and you get the matchup you want. You can have your tight end running a pattern with a defensive lineman covering him, Orpheus Roy. That's the zone blitz. That's where one of the defensive linemen drops back into coverage. Pretty good job by Roy running with the tight end. Jacksonville does not have a timeout, and that really comes into play in terms of strategy. With this many seconds left, second down and goal. And just throw it in the end zone. You could run it, though, and still stop the clock. Brunel throwing. Back in the end zone, oh. juggled and dropped. McCardell was wide open, but he had to do a toe dance and couldn't catch it. He was so worried about having his feet in bounds that he lost concentration on the football. Yeah, but he'll catch nine out of ten of those, and he knows it. That's just a guy being distracted by trying to keep his feet in bounds. Look how open he is. Another huge mistake in the Steelers secondary. Mm -hmm. Again, they just let a guy wide open. Jim Haslett, their coordinator, has to be going wild. And Pittsburgh now takes a timeout. Their final one to make sure they have the right people in defensively. They didn't have him defensively that time. Well, Jacksonville is doing everything they can do to this point to try to keep from blowing Pittsburgh out of here. They miss a field goal. They drop a sure touchdown there. 13 seconds left in the half. Can Pittsburgh dodge a bullet one more time here before halftime? Around 73,000 looking on tonight in Jacksonville. The stadium built as the Gator Bowl and then rebuilt to the tune of about $145 million when the Jaguars were granted an expansion franchise. And it was shocking, remember, going back to that process, most people thought it would be Baltimore and St. Louis getting the teams. It turned out to be Charlotte and Jacksonville, though Baltimore and St. Louis obviously wound up with their teams as well. And both of them ended up spending probably more than an expansion team. Mm -hmm. I know they did in St. Louis. Third down and goal. We're now on a roll. Looking. Throwing, and it's a throw it out of the end zone, and the Steeler defense is able to stiffen. Eight seconds left, fourth down, and in comes Hollis to try to tack on three. Well, the Jaguars, without a timeout, couldn't do much other than what you've just witnessed. And a couple of the one first timeout they lost because the communication between the quarterback and the bench electronically. And of course, they're responsible for that, and that really hurt them. Now Hollis, who just missed a 29-yarder with Barker to hole, same distance as an extra point. They'll spot it at the 10. Pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. I would, I would think so. <laughs> I didn't know that it was this big. Everybody here has room to spread out. Hollis is kick in the end zone, uh -huh. and tentatively, Will Blackwell started to come out, and then thought, mm mm. And Cordell Stewart will begin his first drive of the second half from the 20-yard line as we take a look at the numbers for the first.